All right, guys, welcome back. Nice to have a, a bit of a layoff for a couple of months, to be fair. Um, just getting things ready now to get riding again. And uh, remembering the the video before the last one was the Dawn to Dusk on YouTube. That's the YouTube video. Um, we uh, ran the GPX there and we ran the GPX on Mooses. Now I'm a big fan of Lutrioli tubes. I've got a wheel here, which we're going to look at uh, once I've taken this tyre off. Um, that wheel has got a, uh, a Lutrioli tube in it. It spent most of its life on the back of my KTM. Um, the plan was to put this wheel back on the KTM. I decided I'm going to put this tube on the GPX wheel. There's a couple of reasons uh, for that, and I'm changing the tyres as well. This tyre, what I use for Dawn to Dust, it's not a road legal tyre, whereas this is a road legal tyre. They both look the same, but they're not quite the same. If they're both Midas and they're both 754, but one's a 65M and one's a 65P, and that's the difference, road legal, not road legal. So I'm going to use this one on the GPX uh, for the rest of its life and we're going to put the Lutrioli tube in which has done 250 hours and we'll talk about that when I get the tube out of the, the tyre. So we get this one off first. So that's one down. Now I'll start on the second one and I'll do it on this side that I'm going to do. Here are my Lutrioli tubes. Uh, two rim locks, obviously the valve as well. So we'll just get the, the air out first. Okay, so we've got those off. Now what we need to do is start taking the tyre off. And the first procedure is just like normal, like you would do. I tend to start, so generally the furthest point away from, so you've got the valve and the uh, rim up there. Furthest point away from either the valve or the rim lock near to the valve, whichever. Now, this tube, when I take it out, it's going to be fairly clean because I've not used it since I paid it into this, this wheel. So it'll be still be, now it should be, be nice and lubed up and clean. So all we, all we need to do really is, in real terms, take the tyre and tube off as a whole and transfer it straight onto the other, the other wheel. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to set the tube out and to show you something on about this tube because of the, the you know the, the sort of life it's had and what effect 250 hours running at low pressure has had on this tube. Although it's still serviceable, but 250 hours on the tube has been uh, a significant length of time and it has had some sort of detrimental effects to it. I like anything's not perfect, but. It's done really well so far. It's going to go a bit longer as well. So let's get it off. Just use some good tyre bars. I use these. Uh, they're very similar to the. Not they're not a Pico, but they're like the Pico ones. Uh, I've had these quite a long time. I can't really remember where I got them from, but they've lasted really well and I just generally use three tyre bars, that's all I generally use. Okay, so we've got the first bead broken, the beads off the rim. What we need to do now is the rim lock, which is the furthest away from the, the Schrader valve, we just need to get that out. Okay, we need to bring it up onto this side of the rim. Okay, and to do that, I'll show you how we're going to do that. Best Yorkshire tea going that. So, 
so straight a valve and rim lock there we've got a rim lock here which we need to get over the top of the rim depending on what type of tire you've got it can be easier it can be hard if you've got a, quite a hard walled tire or semi hard walled tire which this one is uh, it can be a little bit difficult to get in there so just make sure the second bead on the opposite side it just pushed off slightly turn it over again what we need to do now is get a tyre bar first into the tyre so I'm just going to lift the tyre and get a tyre bar in I'm using the straight end with the curve up that's just wedged right down so it's actually pulling the rim lock through the hole in, onto the inside of the tyre with the second tyre bar I'm going to slide that in using the spoon end and just slide the spoon in so it's touching the top of the rim lock so I'm pushing on top of the rim lock with the spoon end so I'll just hold that there a second so if you imagine that's a rim lock in in the wheel the spoon end is actually pushing down on top of the rim lock like so so it's pushing it leaving it out so when it leaves it out I'm going to lift in that direction so it will pop it out onto the top side of the rim so we've got that make sure that's in position we can feel it and all we're going to do is push up lift it up and that prevents the rim lock scraping on the edge of the rim okay so it's a matter of just taking your time and making sure it's positioned properly to do that then once you're there you're home and dry turn the wheel over and you are like any other moose uh, tyre combination starts to push off and from here we're just going to pull out the valve and the other rim lock and that's the tyre off completely okay so put that to one side for the moment so what we're going to do now is have a look at the the tube I'm just going to drink my Yorkshire tea as well first Okay, so we'll pull the tube out. Have to hard wall, really hard wall tire. So a little bit stiff. Okay, so. Luke Shirley tube. This particular tube, so it's been on the KTM since it was brand new. Done a lot of work. There only a couple of times it's not been on there. It's actually been on the GPX for a short period of time as well. On the KTM. Uh, discounting this the time it had on the GPX, uh, but on the KTM, approximately 250 hours. So the use it's had, this particular tube, it's, it's been it's been up, up and down the mountain of Turkey twice uh, so it's done the Sea to Sky event twice it's done several other hard enduro events lots of hard enduro type training, Wern, Dew, Cam, Quarry it's had a week in, yeah it's had a week in Portugal plus hours and hours of trail riding up in the Dales so it's done a lot of work, it's lasted a long time and uh, there's still life left in it but one of the things that I, I noticed when last changing it was the fact that on one area there's been some sort of slight splitting and that's probably down to the fact that 
the majority of the time of this life, this tube has been run at really low pressures like two and a half psi. So the the spread of the tire when it's been uh, in has been wide, and there's been a lot of pressure from the rim on the tire on the area where the tube has just started to split slightly. And it's let's say it started to split. It's probably got about a millimeter. I'm just trying to find where it is. I don't know if you can see that, but we've got some slight wear there. It's about a millimetre, maybe one and a half millimetres deep uh, on, the, on the edge of the tube. And that is down to running continually at very, very low pressures. So, so there's that area and there's one other area as well on the tube which is like that. But, you know, that being said, the tube's still serviceable. Um, the intention now is I'm going to put it on the GPX and uh, to avoid any sort of further damage to the tube now I'm going to run it at slightly higher pressure like 5 psi so it keeps the tube more inflated and with the type of tyre that I'm using it'll, it'll work quite well because that is going to be a trail you know the, it's going on the GPX so it, it'll be doing trail type riding uh, sort of long distance riding and some some road use as well so I want those slightly higher pressures in this from now on um, so 250 hours and it's going to get some more as well so I think this Luke Shirley tube has paid for itself several times over and it's all sorts of arguments out there people say oh they're too heavy this aren't other whatever personally I don't notice the difference in weight in these when I'm using them yes I use uh, a moose in the front for hard enduro type work. But on my other bike, on the 450, I've got a loop surely in the, the front and the rear. The GPX is going to get one in the front as well because I need to be road legal. And uh, if you want to be road legal, then you need to use either some sort of air chamber type system. If you're running mooses on the road, they're not road legal, you have an accident and you get investigated then you know you could face the penalty for it so try and be road legal if you can if you especially particularly if you're doing some, you know a lot of, a lot of road work so what we're going to do now is we're going to put this back into the tire so we'll get this tube back in got an open tyre like uh, a Kender Extreme or even the Midas uh, EF07 double green they're quite wide, quite wide open the tube goes into the tyre quite easily if you've got a closed tyre like this uh, where the, the beads are quite close together it can be a little bit fiddly getting in but just like I say like I've been pushed it in like so it's folded it over and then start working it in so we've got the tube in the tyre, just want to now look at the leading edge, which leading edge I want facing the front. I think we'll do it that way, we'll do it as it is, so it's straight on. All we're going to do is line up the Schrader valve and the rim lock with the first two holes. And to make it easier, um, Again, there's two ways of doing these things, whichever suits you. I've seen some of the guys in America now, Luke Chioli is now in the States and some of the guys on YouTube are putting them on. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. The main thing is that you just think about protecting the product and not damaging the product, not damaging your wheel rim, okay? Plenty of lube on for one to make things slide around a little bit easier. I know it's a little bit messy, but it is what it is. You know, that's the nature of the beach. Working on dirt bikes, you're gonna get dirty. <laughs> okay, especially when you're working with uh, grease. My way of doing it is just to lift the tube out slightly. Let me say slightly. 
just so I can get my hand behind it. And the first part I'm going to put in is a Schrader valve. Just make sure we've got the three holes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got one there and one there. I'm just going to put the Schrader valve into the hole. Washer, close fitting washer, and a nut. Now I use two nuts. These are the original brass nuts. And the second nut is really just, just to support the first nut, that's all. That's all it's for, just to give the, uh, the Schrader valve some extra support. That's why I use the second, second one. So that's one, one uh, Schrader valve in, holding the tube in place, throwing it round. Just going to get my hand behind the rim lock and just using my knee. So it makes things a little bit messy when you've got your. What's it? That's in. That's in nicely. No big dramas. Fuck you! I'm coming! Fuck! Fucking Just take your time and just get the uh, the nut on the rim up there. So we've got a few threads on that. No big deal. And then from here, all we're going to do is just push the tyre back onto the tube and making sure the bottom bead is onto the rim. That's it. Just push the bottom bead up to and over the tube. I'm going to push that one on there, like so, and then just lift the tyre so it goes onto the rim. So, tire on, thread valve nut, rim lock nut. Don't screw it all the way down, just a few threads, that's all. Just hold it in position. We're now going to put the bottom bead on and then we'll look at putting the rim lock into position. So I'm just trying to get the camera a bit closer so you can see what's going on. So we've got part of the first bead of the tyre on. You can see the first bead there, what needs fitting over. And then we need to get the rim lock in as well. So all we're going to do, I've just got one tyre bar. Just working from both sides. That's it, it's underneath. Just working both sides equally. to a point where we've got about maybe three inches left, three or four inches of tyre to put on. You can see now we're at a point where we've just got a few inches now, maybe five inches of the very, four or five inches of tyre bead to go over. But we need to get that over as well at the same time. So all I'm going to do is, using the spoon, pop it in, like so, making sure it's in line, making sure that's done underneath properly. So it's catching, so yeah, that's good. So we've got the tyre bar in line with the rim lock. So all we're going to do is just gently push the whole lot over. Yep. So it all goes on, on the inside of the rim. That way we're not causing any damage to the rim area. And we're not causing any damage to the rim lock threads. And all we need to do is lift the tyre slightly 
get the tire bar in, pull the tire back. In fact, I'm going to use two. Okay, I've pulled it down and the valve, the, the rim lock is just moving now towards the hole. So I'm just going to push like that and it's gone through, taking a bit of the, the duct tape which is protecting the, the rim. Now it's got to be said, you don't necessarily have to have rim tape on the inside of your rim because um, the tube is that thick. Uh, what I would say though, if you're not running rim, rim tape, just make sure you've no sharp edges on the inside of your rim with any, any spokes protruding beyond the, uh, the spoke nipples or there's no burrs or anything on there. But I always like to use rim tape anyway or some in duct tape or whatever. So we've got the rim lock through. I'm going to pop that on. That's on a couple of threads. So back to normal procedure. I'm going to start on this side of the Schrader valve. Just getting one tyre bar in. Okay, and I've got a rim lock here and the rim lock, so this rim lock is there. So all I'm going to do is just work around nice and gently. See, so there's loads of grease on this. It's been waiting for the compressor to do its stuff and it's now uh, up to speed. In the meantime, I've, I've put the valve back in in the tube, so the Schrader valve now already. I've put the second nut on as well on the Schrader valve, and again, that's just to give it the first nut support because this tube's been in and out quite a few times, and the threads on the Schrader valves, as you will know, are quite fine. And when you taking these things on and off multiple times you know things will wear so having two nuts on just gives that first nut some support um, just makes it a wider a wider area that you're tightening down on so I've just tightened the nut up just to the point where I can get the uh, the airline lint that's all I've done really the rim locks are still loose so all good in there get some air in there's 25 psi in that. The tyre's on the rim. So I'm just going to tighten down the, the rim locks. Now, my quarter drive torque wrench is in the workshop at Eurotech, so I've just got my small quarter drive racket at home. Ideally, the rim locks need to be tightened down to 10 newton meters. Okay. You don't need to be swinging on these things. You don't need if you if you're using something like a half-inch drive, then there's chances that you're going to put too much pressure on on these, and you'll probably end up breaking the rim lock. So for safety, use a quarter drive. Then you're not going to exert, exert too much force force on these. So I'm just tightening it down to the point where it's up against. It's up against the, the rim now, and just one hand, that's all you need to do, you don't need to go mad. One of the other things as well, on the rim locks, it's always advisable to use either flange nuts, like that, so you don't need to use a washer, or use the KTM long nut, okay. Um, the 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 benefit with a long nut is all the threads are protected on the rim lock when you would screw it down. So ideally, use one of the long nuts on. Like with a lot of things, when you're tightening uh, bolts down on your bike, if you've not experienced enough, uh, then should give somebody else the, the, the task who's suitably experienced do the job for you um, but just don't just wade in there with whatever tools you can find and think you're doing the right thing just you need to know a little bit with experience on working on bikes you get a feel for 
how tight things should be. Just take it down so you can feel it touch the, the rim and then just a couple of, that's it, that's plenty tight enough. Don't need to go any more. Start tying any further, you risk pulling the rim lock out of the tube and the job's buggered then, totally buggered. So, all we do now is just drop the pressure. Yeah, saves about seven psi in that. So there you go, Luxioli tube fitted into the GPX wheel with a road legal tyre as well. Uh, I could talk for hours about Luxioli, I am a big fan. Um, you know, this, this will it's paid for itself time and time again and it's still in very serviceable condition. Even with those tiny little splits what it, it has on, they're only about one and a half mil deep in places. This tube is seven millimetres thick, so the likelihood of those little splits uh, causing a puncture at this moment in time are minuscule, I think. Particularly when I'm running the tyre now at harder pressures. And don't forget, it was running the bike at sustained periods of low pressure over the last couple of years that has sort of caused those you know, imperfections in the tube. Just what, before we finish, one of the other things as well to mention is these tubes are primarily designed for wheels that are running uh, 36 spokes like the KTM Beta, Husky Gas Gas, the Enduro wheels. If you're running a wheel what's got like 40 spokes like on some of the Hondas then I don't think Luke Shield is going to fit. I could, I could uh, stand corrected on that but looking at the way those the rim locks and the shred of valve are spaced I don't think they will work with wheels what have got 40 spokes. So predominantly 18 inch, 21 inch rims with 36 holes. So with that in mind, just make sure that your rims are going to be compatible with Lutrioli tubes if you decide to buy them. That's it for the moment. I'll be back next week. Stay tuned. Hand your amateur media at Eurotech and the Happy New Year, guys.